Uh, Mr. Speaker, I've said it before that the, uh, the compass of our government points north with both purpose and intent uh, to guide our nation and indeed the world to a land that's so diverse with history, heritage, resources and culture. The contributions of Canada's true north plays a key role in our great country, uh, from revenue resource sharing agreements that were put in place under our government that allows our, uh, our, our territories and across uh, the north of our country to uh, assured prosperity uh, both for those territories and for, uh, for the nation. Uh, in budget, 20, uh, budget 2014, I'm going to talk about page 140 of the budget, where it reinforces this idea, Mr. Speaker, and I'll quote, says, Canada's North is a fundamental part of our heritage, our future, and our identity as a country. Building on the government's vision for a new North, Economic Action Plan 2014 is taking action to ensure that the North realizes its full potential by exercising our Northern sovereignty, promoting economic prosperity, and supporting the health of Northerners. Absolutely. Now let me just highlight a few things, Mr. Speaker, that will be beneficial specifically to my riding in the Yukon Territory. There are record transfers of support for social and health services wow. under this budget for the Yukon. Wow. The Yukon will receive significant support through major uh, transfer payments this year. Here, here. All major federal transfers to provinces and territories will grow from current record levels, totaling $65 billion in 2014 and 2015. That's an increase of 56 percent since 2005 and 2006 under the former Liberal government. Well, those guys For the up. Yukon, that total major transfer will total $898 million, including $851 million through the Territorial Formula Financing Program, and that's an increase of $350 million from the previous Liberal government back in 2005-2006. So we heard the member from Mount Peck uh, talking about his Glory Day speech there, and, and he, he clearly forgets what the Liberal government was doing under those transfer payments, which was slashing them. He right. talks about balanced Absolutely. budget that they had back then. They balanced the budgets by slashing transfers to provinces and the territories, specifically hitting our territories square between the eyes. Absolutely. And Mr. Speaker, our government promised not to do that. We didn't do it. And in fact, we've hit historic and record levels. We've done that, coincidentally, without raising taxes on Canadian families. Fantastic. Mr. Speaker, $33 million is going to come to our territory through the Canada Health Transfer. That's an increase of almost $11 million, or a 50% increase since the Liberals were at the helm, and $13 million through the Canada Social Transfer. That's a 36% increase uh, from what the Liberal governments did, as I say, balancing their budgets by slashing transfers to the territories and provinces, and then standing in this House and bragging about what they did to our provinces and territories way, way back. And of course, it probably was so far ago, not many people can remember, but it's always worth a refresher as to why they're sitting over there in the, in the far corner of this house today, Mr. Speaker. Yeah, stay there. To keep pace with the needs of Canadians in rural uh, northern communities, Economic Action Plan also proposes uh, $305 million over the next five years to extend and enhance broadband services here, here. to a target uh, speed of five megabytes, uh, megabits per second, and that's uh, to support an additional 280,000 Canadian households. Uh, that represents almost universal access, Mr. Speaker, and I can tell you when I consulted across our territory, when I met with the chamber, uh, the city chambers, the, the territorial chambers, industry, small business, medium business, and large businesses, families, we're talking about broadband access and services in, in my territory. Here, here. From 2011 to this date, they were asking our government to make a move on that. We've delivered strong commitment to give them the broadband access here, that here. they need, and that's going to help our Canadian families, and that's certainly going to help our businesses grow in our territory. And I'm proud of our government for doing that. Here, here. Canada's north is blessed with an abundant natural resource with the Best potential to fuel northern economic and social development and to secure Canada's future prosperity. But, Mr. Speaker, I have to tell you, riches in the ground on their own do not guarantee economic success above ground. To realize its potential, the north requires efficient regulatory regime, regimes, a skilled local <coughs> workforce, low taxes, well-developed infrastructure, extensive scientific and geological knowledge. Further, it's important to ensure that Northerners have control over development and decisions that su to successful Northern developments mean jobs, prosperity for Northerners themselves. And our government is investing in that infrastructure and on the note of um, uh, control over their, or their developmental decisions, 
Of course, Mr. Speaker, we all know in this House that we're moving closer and closer to the devolution agreement with the Northwest Territories so they can dictate their own fate and future and manage their own lands and resources with their local That's skills, right. knowledge, and ability. And, uh, Mr. Speaker, I've been proud to be part of the committee that's been up there working on that, on that devolution agreement, and I'm looking forward to being able to move that across the finish line for the great people of the Northwest Territories. Here, here. A federal contribution has been made in the past uh, up to $71 million. The Yukon has benefited from uh, the Mayo B hydroelectric uh, facility, which brought uh, electric power to our territory, uh, clean, green energy, and, uh, and meeting the needs of a major infrastructure concern for our territory at the time. The new Building Canada plan that was announced in Economic Action Plan 2013 includes $234 million in the first five years to municipalities and territories through the renewed and indexed gas tax fund. But Mr. Speaker, I can tell you we've all heard great news about the permanency and the indexing of the gas tax fund uh, from all our municipalities, from the Canadian Federation of Municipalities to the small uh, communities in my home territory. They're exceptionally pleased with that. That's allowing those communities to dictate their fate and future, yep. identify their plans and priorities, not just tomorrow, but for a much longer term, to invest with a more flexible gas tax plan that allows them to, to utilize those funds in a far different manner. So we've been responsive to their requests, we've been responsive to their needs, we've done that through consultation. Yeah, yeah. Each one of us in this House, as members of Parliament, have an obligation to meet and consult with our constituents. So that's part of the government consultation process, is every one of us as individuals sitting here, going into our communities, talking with groups and organizations and individuals to find out what their priorities are, Mr. Speaker, and those are reflected in this very budget and in previous budgets that don't just speak about long term or one year plans, but project us well into the future, 2016, 2017 and years beyond. And I'm glad that we're part of a government that not only listens, but incorporates things in the budget that are long term here, planning, here. thinking beyond the life of a mandate, thinking long term for Canadians prosperity. Here, here. So Mr. Speaker, I know I'm going to end up running out of time before I get through the stack of all of these uh, the notes I have about this budget, but I'm sure we're going to get an opportunity to, to get some questions in the House that I'll be more than happy to answer. And I certainly hope some of them come from the Liberal Party. So we can go back and ref reflect on, uh, on, on some of the things that they did that led them to where they are and where we are today. Um, Mr. Speaker, uh, 40 million. let me talk a little bit about our territorial mine training program. Economic Action Plan uh, announced capital support for additional trades and technical facilities in, in, uh, in the Yukon at the, uh, at the Yukon Center for Innovation in Mi uh, Mining. Uh, that's been a, a widely uh, successful program. It's growing. And Mr. Speaker, this year we added in this budget uh, a, a trades loan program for, for students going into Red Seal trade programs that's going to give them an excellent oh, yeah. opportunity to access student loans where they didn't have that opportunity in the past. And, and why did we come up with that, Great Mr. Speaker? We came up Brilliant. with that because that's what we heard from industry, from businesses, from educational institutions, from our chambers. We heard that by consulting with Canadians about what, what they knew they would need to fill high demand jobs, to put students, to put uh, Aboriginal and First Nation people in our country in the best position to access a highly skilled job opportunities that are available today. And we responded by making sure that education was accessible, education is affordable, and education is targeted and focused at those opportunities that exist today. And I know my riding in the Yukon Territory is, is going to be very much excited about this. I can go on about a number of other things that were directed well, do. clearly at the Yukon. Um, and Mr. Now. Speaker, I'll just touch on a couple that, that are really important. One was our government's uh, reinvestment in the strategic investment in Northern Economic Development yeah. Program through the Canadian Northern Economic Development Agency. The Yukon uh, Tourism Association asked for us to renew that program because it was a great way to diversify markets. The Minister of Tourism for the Territorial Government specifically said we get an excellent return on investment through this program. We'd like to see it continue. He talked to me specifically about it. He talked directly with our, our federal counterpart ministers about that. And our government listened by renewing that program. I can go on and on again, Mr. Government. Speaker, but I know you're, you're starting to stand out of that chair and tell me, time's up for you, Yukon. So I'm going to sit down and look forward to some questions from my right, colleagues in the excellent. House. Thank excellent. you very much, Mr. Speaker.